Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookham here. Today we continue with the interview series with Jerry Brainham and together we will be addressing a question that has plagued bodybuilding for a long time and that is whether eating too much protein can cause kidney disease or renal failure. In this interview with Jerry Brainham, Jerry talks about the origin of the myth of this statement and we discuss the effects of high protein on blood pressure and kidney health as well as other factors in bodybuilding that can actually cause kidney disease and renal failure. Enjoy. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of people might worry that, you know, there's another myth that uh, eating a lot of protein causes kidney disease. Kidney issues, yeah. Yeah, that was, it's kind of humorous because if, if you check with, it's really almost laughable where that came from. That's based on a, a, a researcher who noticed that what, get you ready for this? You're not going to believe this. When people in renal failure now when you're in kidney you know the kidneys are the main organ that excretes uh waste products of protein metabolism yeah, exactly. urea. now yeah, you're, if you're in kidney failure if you're taking a lot of protein your kidneys are already not working right exactly. you're putting a tremendous yeah. even a greater strain of the kidneys so it's it's dangerous it can worsen <laughs> kidney problems so, so he had these. He noticed that the the renal failure patients, uh, who these guys were on kidney dialysis for crying out loud, when they ate high protein diets, the kidney function got worse. Yeah. So he extrapolated that to everybody. He, he wrote an article in the New England Journal of Medicine, saying that you know a high protein diet harms the kidneys and will eventually lead to renal failure. And this was the belief, and it's still to this day, yeah. many people believe that. And then there's another theory that, you know, the, the kidneys work by filtering the blood. Most people know mm -hmm. that. But to do that, the kidneys have to have a little bit higher blood pressure than the rest of the body. Yeah. So, you know, but what, what happens is if the blood pressure gets too high, in other words, past a certain point, now that the filtering units of the kidneys called nephrons, they literally start to blow up. One mm -hmm. by one, and that ki that can cause kidney problems, right? The problem now. Another uh, uh, researcher came up with a, another idea. He said that when you eat a high protein diet, you raise the local blood pressure in the kidney to the extent. Now it's not going to happen immediately, but he says long term high protein diets will eventually lead to lower kidney function as you get older. Now normally I dismiss that immediately. However, it is a fact that most older people, this is kind of shocking, only have 40% of their kidney function left. Most mm -hmm. older people. A lot of it has to do with diseases like high blood pressure is one of the worst things you can do to your kidneys. They slowly mm -hmm. destroy your kidneys, right? Yeah. Certain drugs, alcohol, blah, blah, blah. Even steroids are very bad for the kidney for various reasons. In fact, because a lot of the bodybuilders that have passed away recently most mm -hmm. recently, this guy named, uh, uh, just, what was the other day? Uh, uh, Justin Lloyd. Yeah, Boston Lloyd. Boston he, Lloyd, sorry. Boston Lloyd, who I don't know, by the way, never met the man, 29 years old. Apparently, he died of a heart attack, but mm -hmm. he's been in renal failure for five yeah, years. Exactly. Now, people don't know they have the, that the way the internal organs work, it's like a house of cards. Mm -hmm. In other words, if your liver starts to fail, your, then your kidneys could fail and then your heart fails. Yeah. So you eventually will die of a heart attack, but it's actually the initial cause might have been the failure of the other organs. They even yeah. have something called the hepatorenal syndrome where your liver fails and it'll cause your kidneys to fail. So yeah. what, what his kidneys probably is what gave him a heart attack. And, and it, now what caused his kidneys to fail? He said it was some sort of particular drug, but steroids can do that too, high dose steroids. Of course. But, but the point being that now, you know, you know, in other words, it seems plausible that since the kidneys already have uh, increased blood pressure, that if you take in protein, you know, the blood pressure will increase, which is true. But here's the here's the problem. When they've checked this out more carefully with various medical instruments and, and you know, uh, visually machine, MRI, CT scans, all that, <clears throat> the protein doesn't cause any damage. In other words, the, the kidneys are are much tougher than this researcher believed. They can handle the temporary rise. It's a temporary rise. You have to understand. Mm -hmm. When when you use the protein, the, the you know the amino acid byproducts, urea, they might cause the blood pressure in the kidney to rise, but it's temporary. It's yeah. kind of like when you do leg presses. 
if you did get get into a leg a heavy leg press machine, you know the way that that the, the uh, uh, you know when it's pushed back towards you when you lower the weight, you kind of you know it, you're 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 kind of under pressure. Yeah. yeah. And if you would if you would take the blood pressure, if you if you had somebody stand up. Oh, yeah. After doing a, a heavy leg press set, especially if they use high intensity, and especially if they didn't do that two inch leg press where they did a full range yeah, full of down to the lungs. Exactly. If you check their blood pressure, you'd want to take them to the hospital right away. <laughs> Absolutely. Because they're in stroke town. <laughs> they're like, they look like they're going to have a stroke. Their blood pressure is through. But if you check it about five minutes later, yeah. it's right down. And that's what happens in the kidneys when you eat high protein. Blood pressure goes up in the kidneys goes right down, does not cause damage. They've done dozens and dozens of studies where they, you know, they try to, you know, find out one way or the other whether a high protein diet harms the kidneys. None of them. They don't harm the kidneys. But I will add one uh, one caveat to to that point. Bodybuilders have a habit. You know this to be true. And I did this myself. When you're preparing for a contest, you want to get as dry as they use the expression dry, which means dehydrated. Because yeah. the less body water you hold, the idea and, oh, and if you and if you have you have to have low body fat. Because if you have subcutaneous fat, it makes no difference how much water. Exactly. You gotta get rid of most of your subcutaneous fat. And if you get rid of the water the water that's between the skin, you get that coveted ripped appearance where you look yeah. you, you look like you have like you're like a, a human anatomy chart, right? Yeah. Run so back. The, Right. The body bill is trying to get as dehydrated as possible. A lot of them use diuretic drugs. There's ways to do it naturally. Low carbs is a natural diuretic. Vitamin C, B complex. These are all natural diuretics. But you know, the, the, but the point is that it's if you if you stay on an extended in an extended dehydrated state, it's got it's like this is what you're doing to your kidneys. Mm -hmm. You're 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 pounding your kidneys because yeah. when you lower the blood volume, this is what happens when you get dehydrated. That's why a lot of guys, when you see them on diuretics, they'll pass out because yeah. their blood volume, meaning the amount of water in their blood, is so low that their brain's not even getting enough blood. They're not getting enough yeah. oxygen. I've seen them pass out on saying they'll literally, literally fall on the floor. But the bad part is when the blood volume is low from dehydration. The kidneys can't filter the blood properly, mm -hmm. and even worse, you they do that does cause destruction of the nephrons, and it's not from the protein; it's from the lack of blood volume, the lack of fluid that is very harmful to kidneys. So that's one practice that bodybuilders do, whether you're natural or on drugs. And of course, if you're taking drugs like diuretics or steroids, it, it accentuates it and makes it much worse. Hmm. You know, where a lot of these guys wound up, wind up with kidney damage. This is one of the reasons why you're seeing, if you check the, the causes of death, not just Boston Lloyd, but some of these other guys, a lot of them you'll notice have had died of kidney problems. Yeah. And this is probably the reason why, because they don't realize dehydration is. Now, listen, don't get me wrong. If you want to, like, let's say the last week, what they call peak week, you know, mm -hmm. the last seven days before a contest. If you want to dehydrate for, let's say, two to three days before the show, uh, to, get, to, get, to get that rip striated appearance, that's not going to hurt you. That's temporary. I'm talking extended. I've known bodybuilders yeah. who cut water out. You won't believe this. Two months before a contest. Yeah, Those guys good. are going to have kidney damage. I guarantee you. Yeah. Well, I guess it doesn't help nowadays. <clears throat> supposed to, with social media constantly being on your face, um, you know, back then, uh, you know, we've talked about this before, um, but the bodybuilders would get off cycle, would recover, give their bodies chance to to recover. And nowadays, it's just they got to basically be like that, look like that year year round, and right. it's just completely destructive. So. Completely, yeah. And also on that topic, the advice given on these various social media is, you know, you really this. Is, I'm talking to the audience here. Don't listen to these people. They hide behind, you know, screen names. And a lot of these people are purposely giving out bad information, just like they do with the vaccines, where you have a lot of people giving out false information about COVID vaccines. I don't know what their motive is, honestly. I don't know whether they really believe what they're saying, but the point is what they're saying is false. And if you listen to these people, you're going to get hurt because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. No reputable person would tell you to take some of the steroid regimes they, they talk about or to dehydrate yourself for six weeks. 
I mean, they're hurting people. Don't listen to these people. Yeah. Don't. I'm telling you, don't listen. You're going to be sorry if you do. Yeah, and there are a few characters out there that talk quite a lot about this, like as if it's just a walk in the park, and yeah, it's no, not the no, way. No. Absolutely. As we have heard from Jerry Branham, the origin of the myth that high-protein diets cause renal failure originates from research studies performed in the 1980s on patients with kidney failure who were actually on kidney dialysis and therefore eating a high-protein diet would of course, with these pre-existing problems, you know, it's no surprise that, that these high-protein diets would of course cause further harm to the diseased kidneys and lead to renal failure. For those that are unaware, the kidney's function is to filter blood and to remove wastes and excess fluids from your body amongst other functions as well as regulates one blood pressure. Kidneys perform their filtration process through structural units called nephrons, which contain a filter-like structure called the glomerulus, which is a network of capillaries. Blood pressure is necessary for glomerular filtration as it pushes blood through this structural filter. The current theory is that high protein diets can increase local blood pressure around the kidneys and therefore lead to renal failure. However, protein causes only a transient increase in blood pressure and does not cause kidney damage as demonstrated by a recent review and meta-analysis by DeVries and colleagues. Having said all that, it is necessary to differentiate the normal and natural population to bodybuilders who are on steroids. When bodybuilders take steroids, there are many negative changes that occur in the body, such as an increase in blood pressure and liver damage, and one could say that they are already diseased. If these dangerous compounds are taken for long enough, the glomerular filtration structures of the kidneys suffer due to the increased blood pressure, and eventually kidney failure can result. Worse still, diuretics reduce water and leave one in a dehydrated state and therefore this further can increase blood pressure. Bodybuilders that practice water reduction via diuretic intake are at a greater risk of kidney damage, whether they are natural or not, and the reason is that by reducing water content in the body, the blood thickens and therefore the blood pressure is increased. The blood thickens so much that the kidneys can't perform their filtration process, which results in the blood destroying the kidneys. Therefore, you can just imagine what the combination of steroids plus diuretics will actually have on the kidneys. It's like a double impact. We have seen recently uh, examples such as Boston Lloyd pass away with kidney failure and dialysis. And recently, Ronnie Coleman talked about the practice of taking diuretics being so dangerous, more so than the administration of steroids. And I have to agree with him there. Extended use of diuretics being ripped 24 seven as is expected in today's bodybuilding circuit will definitely increase the risk of kidney damage. Nowadays, bodybuilders are expected to be on gear and be ripped year round. In all honesty, I think it's worth asking yourself, is it worth it? Anyway, I do hope you have enjoyed this interview with Jerry Branham, debunking the myth that at least for natural lifters and the general population, a high protein diet does not cause kidney damage. If you have enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a like, subscribe to this channel and Jerry's channel too for more content like this and click the bell button to be notified of future videos. And don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. Also make sure to subscribe to Applied Metabolics newsletter by Jerry Branham if you do wish to enhance your knowledge on bodybuilding nutrition, especially as a natural bodybuilder. More information is given in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about natural bodybuilding, hit me up for online coaching at www.goldenerabookum.com and also check out my website for ebooks and golden era training. That's it from me. This is the golden era book I'm saying. Bye for now. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. 
Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the Classic Physique Bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platt, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash stores slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding.